This is a quick video about the new and improved Rigify face rig in Blender 3. If you know how to use the old face rig, you'll be able to use the new one with minimal effort. The workflow is almost the same with a small extra step. A little bit of a history. Until Blender 2.9, Rigify offered a nice but rigid face rig. You could only use the predefined face structure and features. It was impossible to have two faces unless you used crazy workarounds like I did in my advanced ogre rigging course. So yeah, the face was kind of limited and in Blender 3 the face rig system was completely revamped and it was made modular using these new rig types which I'll list on the screen now and I'm going to cover them in another video. They are not very intuitive to use but if you learn how to use them, that opens up a lot of possibilities for rigging unusual creatures. In this video, we'll focus on converting the old face to the new one. There are two main ways to get the standard face rig. One is to create a standard rigify human meta rig, so Shift A armature human meta rig. Okay, and that includes this uh, face rig. The other way is if you go to edit mode, armature tab, under Rigify Samples, you'll be able to create any of Rigify's rig types, including the face. So if I expand the search field here and look for face, I can choose the super face and edit as a sample. And here it is, just the same as in the default meta rig. So I'm going to undo. And for this tutorial, I'll be using the pre built meta rig. But if you are serious about Rigify, you should also learn how to work with the samples and the rig types, and you can do so from my Rigify playlist. So before we go on and apply this to an actual model, let's try to understand what is happening. I'm going to go to pose mode, wireframe mode, and select this hidden bone in here. And if I look at the rig type, it is the super face. If you generate this rig right now, you'll actually get the old rig. But of course we want the new one. So if you scroll down a little bit here, you'll actually see a warning that this is the monolithic or the old face rig, which is deprecated and then a button to upgrade it. And also if you go to the armature tab where the generate rig is, you'll also see the same button, upgrade the face rig. If I click this button and confirm, You'll see that the rig changed a little bit, a few bones were added. And now if I look at the rig type of this bone here, which used to be the super face, you'll see that it has no rig type anymore. And if I try selecting some of the other bones, a lot of them have a rig type. For example, this is a skin basic chain. This is a jaw rig type. This is another chain, another chain. This is an eye and so on and so forth. Okay, so that essentially converted the old face rig to the new one. And because this conversion adds some additional bones, I would recommend that you first align your face bones to your face model and then convert to the new system. So I'm going to undo. Here I have the old face rig. And if I wanted to start aligning these bones, I would move them just like with the previous system. And then at the end, I'm going to update it. Okay, here is a practical example. I have this cartoony character and I have already aligned the body bones reasonably well and now I need to align the face bones. Again, if I look under pose mode, this uh, kind of hidden bone holds the super face rig type which is the old face so I haven't updated the face yet. I haven't pressed this button and now I'm going to align the bones to my character's face. I'm going to go a little bit fast here. I have a separate tutorial going in a lot of details about aligning these bones. So now from the side view, I'm going to go to edit mode and select all of the face bones. So I want to deselect any neck bones and so on. Move it forward a little bit and then I'll scale it up to match the size of my character's head. Note that I have the x-axis mirror setting enabled here and that way if I move any of these bones on the left side, the right side will also move automatically. So I'm going to start by quickly aligning these bones from the side view. Always box select over these uh, bones so that you move all of the connected bones together. In some areas uh, things may disconnect, you want them to stay connected.
Now I'm going to switch to front view and again align all bones as I see them from the front view. It doesn't have to be perfect, then we'll switch to perspective view and do the final tweaks. Make sure to move this joint at the middle of the button just up and down and not sideways so that you don't disconnect it. I'll explain why uh, at the end. These bones should reach to the top of the forehead. This set of bones should be between the brow and the actual eye bones. So something like this. Okay, so now we have a nice basic alignment. I'm going to go to object mode, turn off X-ray mode, which was on from the start. And now you see that some bones are a little bit above the skin, others are inside the skin. So I'll switch to face snapping, go to edit mode, and then I guess I can turn on in front from the armature options. Okay, now if I grab any of these joints and press control, that will snap them to the surface of the character. Okay, the face bones are fine now. I'm going to hide the face for a second. Actually, the um, eye bones may need a little bit of adjustment. Okay. Now I can hide the face and focus on the other meshes, such as the eyes. There is an eye bone in here, right here. And to snap it right in the center of the eye, I can go to edit mode, select the center loop line of this uh, eye bone and press shift S, cursor to select it, then go back to the meta rig, edit mode, select my eye bone and press shift S, selection to cursor. And then with um, individual origins, I'm going to scale it up a little bit. The size doesn't matter, but I want to see this bone. Okay, then we also have some teeth bones. I'm going to align this one to the upper teeth and this one to the lower teeth. And these are the tongue bones. And I'm going to align them to the tongue uh, mesh that I see. Okay, so that was it for the bone alignment. I'm going to unhide my meshes. And now I'm actually ready to generate. So first I'm going to update my face rig and then generate. Okay, now I'm going to select just the main character mesh, shift select the generated rig, and parent with automatic weights. And now we see that the this jaw widget is opening the mouth, the teeth and so on are not moving yet, but the main face mesh is being deformed by these face bones. Okay, now when it comes to weighting the uh, eyes and teeth, in earlier versions of the Rigify face rig, we didn't have a deformation bones for the eyes and teeth, but in the new rig we do. So to bind the eyes and teeth, uh, here's what you could do. I'm going to hide the face mesh and then select the eyes. Let's hide the meta rig. I'll select the eyes and teeth meshes, shift select the generated rig and press Control p and parent with empty groups. Okay, then I'll go to the eye, go to edit mode, select all of the vertices, and I'm going to look for eye in the, um, in the vertex groups, and I want to assign all vertices to the DEF I.L vertex group. Okay, then similarly on the other side, I'm going to assign everything to the I.R vertex group, the upper teeth, I'm going to look for teeth and assign them to teeth.t, t stands for top, and then the bottom teeth, I'm going to assign all vertices to the bottom vertex group, assign. And for the tongue, I'm actually going to try to parent with automatic weights again. So select the tongue, shift select the armature, control P, automatic weights. 
So now let's unhide everything. And I'm going to select the rig, go to pose mode, and let's try opening the mouth. And you'll see that it does work. It works quite it works quite well actually for just automatic weights. Let's try to find the tongue widget. Here it is. And it does work, uh, although I can see that there is a little bit of influence of the tongue bones on the lip that can be fixed with uh, weight painting. If you're not sure how to solve such uh, simple weight painting issues, I have a separate weight painting playlist. But yeah, this rig is working now. So this is the main process of creating the new face rig. In the next couple of minutes, I'm going to show you the features of the rig, especially focusing on features that are new in Blender 3. If you expand the end panel under item, you'll see the rig main properties and rig layers. And we have three layers that have to do with the face. So I'm going to hide everything else and let's explore the layers one by one. So in the main face la layer, we have the jaw, which is probably something that you'll be working with a lot. So you mainly want to rotate uh, this jaw on the x-axis to open the mouth, but you can also rotate it sideways to create different expressions. Uh, the, you can move the widget, but you cannot scale it. And then there is one control for each landmark of the face. For example, this uh, moves the, let me hide the metric, this moves the nose and you can kind of move rotate or scale this to create uh, really cartoony effects. Same with the ear and eye. And of course you have this widget which controls the direction of the eyes. So the eyes will always point to this widget and you can, and you can move each eye individually. Or you can create a cross eye effect. And here is a new control that we didn't have until Blender 3. This mouth widget, you can kind of grab it and control the whole mouth with it. You can scale it, move it and rotate it. There are teeth widgets if you need to move the teeth. Now let's look at the rig properties. For the mouth or jaw, there is mouth lock. So if we enable it, then moving the jaw will not separate the mouth. The mouth will stay closed no matter what. And then there are options for the eyes. You have the eyelid follow option, which is new in Blender 3. So if I move this widget, you'll notice that uh, the eyes move and also the eyelids react to the movement of the eyes. If we disable these, then the eyelids won't be affected by this movement. In the previous version of the face, we had an option, a slider, that controlled whether this widget moves with the head or not. So currently, if I rotate the head, the widget moves with it. If you want to make this widget independent of the head, you can change the parent. So if you click this and parent it to the root, for example, then the eye widget will stay in place. And that can be useful if the character's eyes need to be focused on an object in the scene. So those are the rig properties that we have. Let's move to the other layer of face controls, the face primary controls. In here, one of the most important controls is this one on the upper eyelid. With it, you can open and close the eye. And this part may need a little bit of weight painting. This will allow you to control the lower eyelid. This widget here control the eyebrow. So if you need to move the whole eyebrow, you can select both, switch to bounding box center and move them as a whole. And if you need to control the middle of the brow, you use this uh, widget. The widgets around the mouth are also important. This will allow you to fine tune the shape of the mouth. And you can create something like a smile. Or a frown and other expressions. And other than that, 
each of these widgets will move the area that it is close to. And finally, we have the secondary uh, face controls, which seem to include a lot of the primary ones. Uh, you can have the same widgets on the same layer, and it seems that the default setup makes use of that. But um, on this layer, you have fine control over different areas of the mesh, and, and they are very self-explanatory because each widget moves the area that it is close to. Something interesting and new in this uh, version of the rig is the shape of the mouth. If I disable mouth lock now and open the mouth, you'll see that we have a nice curvature in the mouth, whereas the old rig was producing kind of pinched geometry in here. And in most cases, this is actually better, but if you want to reproduce the old behavior, you can go to the meta rig, and here for each uh, side of the mouth, I'll change the sharpen setting end to zero. So I'm going to do it for the left side of the lower lip and left side of the upper lip. And if you want it on the other side, you have to do it to the these two bones as well. But here I'm going to regenerate. And now if I open the mouth, you'll see that the geometry is pinched in here on the um, on the left side and on the right side it is uh, smooth and curved. As you probably know, Rigify is prone to errors, especially when generating the rig. And now I'm going to show you some of the possible errors that you can get with this new face rig. Let's isolate the meta rig. And as I said, you shouldn't disconnect these um, lip bones. If I disconnect them and then go to object mode and try to generate, we'll get this error. So I'm going to undo. And also related to that, when you upgrade the rig to the new system, you get these additional bones. And if you disconnect any of them, and try to generate, you'll get another type of error. So all of these uh, bones need to stay connected. And so, as I said, uh, when you move any of these bones, box select over the area that you want to move, making sure that you're not selecting anything else in the background, and then you can move them as one, and then uh, you won't have any generation errors. I hope this helps, and if you notice any other errors, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, consider getting my advanced Rigify course. I'll be updating it with information about the new rig types in Blender 3. If you want to support CG Dive in general, you can also join our special services on Gumroad or Patreon. Thanks to people who are already supporting me. Please click like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time.